what is up guys what's up welcome back to another video so glad you're here really do mean that truthfully it really does mean a lot to have your support and that these messages are really resonating with you um that's really what this is all about uh it's selfishly fulfilling to be selflessly helping you i guess is how i would put it so um anyways if i am helping you maybe i'm not but Today's topic, we'll jump right in. Self-reflection will give you all of the answers you seek. Self-reflection will give you all of the answers you seek. Lately, again, why I wanted to thank you again for your support, for your feedback, for so many different reasons. Um, people are asking a lot of questions and, you know, hey, what do you think about this? Or how would I do this? Or what's your take on this? Or whatever. And I share from my perspective, my own experience. However, I'm very mindful that I'm not here to give advice or like guidance or direction unless we've developed that connection and relationship one-on-one -on -one with each other. And I understand who you are, what your situation is. I can certainly share insights and downloads that I get based on questions and things. But this video is really about you learning to get into a place of self-study self-reflection, self-examination. Because all of the answers that I get, whether in questions or even when I am coaching people, I'm really here as just a mirror for you. And even when I'm coaching people one-on-one -on -one in you know, a live session, a lot of it is me listening and asking questions that will lead whoever I'm working with to have an insight or awareness and pause and give themselves space and time for a moment of reflection to learn something about themselves maybe they didn't know before or weren't aware of or the way that I ask a question will shift the perspective so people can go hey man I never thought of it like that okay um or you know I ask them and they say something and go huh like that's always the best thing right not necessarily when someone tells us but when we figure out the answer on our own so all the questions really this video is about that you seek to have answered about your life, your situation. It comes from you be, you and your willingness to sit down and be brutally honest with yourself in a place of intentional self-reflection. And we'll talk with that about what that means during this video. Man, I took a day off. I had a long week of work and then I took a day off yesterday. I literally just slept and listened. We, so a couple things on that. Talk about one, making sure that you rest when you're tired. So if you feel burnt out, do not feel guilty and give yourself a day off of rest because that's what I had to do yesterday. I wanted to make a video just because I enjoy it, but I was so burnt out. I literally just chilled out, slept with my little dog all day, hung out. And I also signed from the universe. We talk about synchronicities, right? I took my car in to get an oil change and my uh, tires rotated yesterday. And I had set an appointment with this one comp this one place and I went in, they didn't have my appointment set. And I was like, oh, whatever, man, I'm going to go to play someplace down the street. So I called the guy and he's like, you know where we're at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dropped it off. And it's a tire rotation oil change. Shouldn't take more than an hour, even if you are busy. Literally took all day. I called this guy twice. He's like, yeah, hey, just checking in. Is my car ready? He's like, yeah, it's up in the bay right now. You know, I'll call you back. So it was frustrating because, you know, my ego was like, dude, what the hell? Like, this is an oil change in a car wash. Like, come on, man. What are you doing? Like, it's like seven hours. Like, what's going on here? Like, I know you weren't that busy. Anyways, so my ego was all flared up. But then I always, again, put myself in a place of mindfulness or do my best to out of the emotion and think, well, what is the lesson here? What What's the universe trying to tell me? What's the sign? And I was so burnt out that it was telling me, you need to sit on your ass all day and do nothing, buddy. That's the best thing you can do today. You are tired. You're physically, mentally, emotionally drained. You're spiritually fulfilled because you put in a lot of work, which is great and um, should have some good money coming in because of that. But anyways, it was like, you need to rest. And so we talk about synchronicities, paying attention to signs. I, I had all this stuff I wanted to do yesterday. I wanted to make a video. I wanted to get a haircut, do all this stuff, but I didn't have my car. And I'm like, yo, bro, like what's going on? But the universe is literally like, you can't go anywhere, even if you wanted to. I mean, I could, I could Uber and all that stuff, get rides. But you see what I'm saying though? You, it's important we're mindful, especially when you're awakened now, pay attention to these little things. I wanted to do stuff yesterday, but the universe was like, no, your car is gonna get worked on. This is also a sign for you to chill the F out, go to sleep, take a nap, uh, play with Manny, my, my little dog, you know, whatever, drink a bunch of water, like, 
don't you know don't worry about pigging out your body needs the calories too right now like you do whatever you want rest eat some ice cream uh, you know whatever and so i did and it was amazing but at first i was fighting it so i realized because i had been in such a place of intense work and focus doing videos working out taking care of my dog then going straight to work right doing all these things having consecutive busy days i was in this momentum of being very productive very present like let's go let's go like a lot of adrenaline and then yesterday when i wanted to keep doing stuff again the universe was like no bro today you need to calm down because you're too worked up and if you keep going like this you're gonna burn out your central nervous system is gonna give out so you need to rest so it's not really related to this video but it is because they're all related so we talk about pay attention to the signs of synchronicities and also the need for rest do not burn yourself out the rest is just as important as the workout that's what i used to always tell my clients because it's true i can't have you work out seven days a week if you're working out with me you're not going to get in shape that way you're going to burn out you're actually going to hurt yourself because your body's not getting time to heal so you have to rest and pay attention to the size of the universe a couple of side messages on today's video so let's talk about self-reflection and why it gives you all the answers you seek and why it's so important self-study self-examination self-reflection this is the key to unlocking your intuition, your inner wisdom, getting all the answers you want, and building confidence within yourself. Everything. We're all trained from a young age to look outside ourselves for, answer, for answers. Think about it. You're a baby. You're an infant. You're a toddler. You're an adolescent. All the way through adolescent, young adulthood, and even most people throughout adulthood. Your parents are just spoon feeding you answers. They're doing the best they can. They don't realize they don't have the answers, but they're giving you the answers based on their own experience. So we were trained to always listen to other people and other sources other than ourselves. If you're one of these rare, rare people, and I don't know any parents that do this, any, any at all. So if you're one of these one out of a whatever, man, you are so blessed. And what I'm referring to is, and if you are a parent, I invite you to do this instead of just tell your kids what to do start asking them questions. What do you think? What do you think about this situation? What do you think you should do? What do you think would be the best uh, way to go about this? Why do you think that would? Okay, I understand that. Let's think about that. If you did it this way, what do you think would happen? Do you think uh, that would happen? Well, what do you think about that? And so giving your kid the, and us as people, an opportunity to build autonomy, build intuition, self-trust, our own identity, on what we think is important and the tools to reflect and learn. The only person I've ever heard do this is uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza and he talks about it um, on some of his uh, videos that I've seen on the internet, like talking about his kids, you know, and, and says the same thing, you know, how did I do today? At what point did I fall from grace? You know, what would I have done different? How could I have handled that differently? And he would, tr he talks to and raised his kids like that, you know? Well, why, why are you upset, sweetheart? Well, Tammy took my toy and I wanted to hit her. Okay, well, why did that make you upset? Well, because it was my toy. Okay, and like, you see, like he didn't like just be like, well, hey, that's wrong, blah, blah, do this, which is what most people do, unfortunately. He's like, okay, well, you know, you could certainly hit her, but what do you think would happen then? Well, I'd get in trouble. Well, is that what you want to happen? Well, no, see what I'm saying? Like he's, he's working with his kids in a way to where they're opening up their minds and changing perspectives and seeing things and figuring out them for themselves they're learning the tools to learn this stuff properly but we're not like that most people are not you know um most people can't even handle their own emotions and especially parents right they're short on time and i'm not a parent so i don't know so you know it's not i'll put that caveat out there but at least from what i observed from my friends family and my own experience um with my parenting or lack of um or you know being parented or lack of parenting for myself but anyways we're trained to do what we're told and to always look for the answers outside of ourselves to the point where even now, what do we always do? We ask other people what we should do. We ask other people for the answers and how we should go about things. Now, of course, again, please don't take this out of context. If you are new at a job and you don't know how to do something and you need you need to ask someone because it's a specific thing you need to learn how to do like you're work, you're a nurse and you're working in a new hospital you don't know where things are or like you're a brand new nurse that have never done the profession of course you need to be asking questions so you can learn the specific answers this is about 
taking it into account. But even in that situation, right, what would a little self-reflection, self-study do? Now, again, we are gonna need to consult specific people for specific answers to specific questions, of course. This is about when you look at your life and you look at yourself and how you want to change now that you're awakened, how do I go about that? You know, and so we'll, we're gonna talk about that. So as we age and mature, we're still so heavily influenced by everything and everyone around us until one day we wake up and we start asking questions. So again, a lot of the times we don't realize how programmed and brainwashed we are. You've been told what you had to do and should do by your parents your entire life, by media, by um, you know your friends, by teachers, by peers, by coworkers, by uh, you know all kinds of sources, right? Do this, do this, do this. You never want to do any of it. You just don't realize that all this is being programmed into you. It's other people's projections onto you. So at what point in our lives do we switch from looking outside ourselves for the answers to asking ourselves truly within what I think most people never do most people never do they never do or they ask themselves the questions but they don't realize the answers are getting are the ones that have been programmed into them because of other people projecting their stuff onto them so what does it mean to really truly tap into your own intuition and trust yourself. Well, if you're watching this again, you've been watching my content, you're probably a very highly sensitive person. You're an empath. You've probably been through a lot of trauma growing up, you've probably been abused, taken advantage of, uh, bullied all these different things, even by your parents, maybe especially by your parents, maybe even abused in a lot of mentally, emotionally, sexually, all kinds of different ways from people close to you. And so when that happens, or maybe you were like me, you're like basically neglected and abandoned, not necessarily intentionally, that's another story though. But point being, you've gone through a lot of that stuff. If you're watching this, you're probably a light worker, all that stuff, you are. So when we, and it's for a reason, all that trauma, all the crap you went through is so that you can heal and on the other side of that healing space, you have become this person with wisdom and knowledge and strength because of the experiences you've overcome, that's what they're there for. But going through all that stuff, you never got to be yourself or develop your own identity because every time when you were a little kid growing up, you tried to do what you wanted to do, you were shut down by it, you were shut down for it, you were bullied, you just could never be you, everything you did was wrong. Your parents, your friends, like, I remember when I was in like uh, elementary school and I wanted to hang out with these like cool kids and stuff and we were on the jungle gym and like they j like jumped me in, dude. It was crazy, but I'm like a strong dude. But they, and like I had to climb out the jungle gym. There's like six boys up here and they're like kicking me on the jungle gym and I still made it to the top because I'm a beast. But anyways, I remember I would hang out, hang out with these people because I was desperate for love and attention and I was like, well, these are the cool kids. I'm going to hang out with them. Anyway, and they would laugh at me because I had an, I, I had like a goofy laugh. I have a goofy I'm like, oh. And they'd like, I would laugh. And I don't know why this is popping up. It's interesting. I guess it's, it's relevant to the example. I would like laugh. And every time I would laugh, they would like, you know, mock me and make fun of me and tell me how goofy my laugh was. And I was just laughing, like having a good time. So that's an example of like when you're trying to be yourself and outside influences will push it down and say, no, don't be yourself. It's wrong. And we're going to make fun of you for it. So you've had that happen in so many different ways. You were the best writer in your class but your teacher never let you share stories because she knew you were uh the best writer in your class so she never called on you even though you had something really good you wanted to share because she knew that you were had like a gift and a talent was jealous of it secretly but she held you down you wanted to be uh you know you've always been a naturally very pretty girl but your mom always like you know i don't know talk trash to you told you how you're fat whatever right so when you go through these traumas as a kid especially if you're a light worker, you're an empath, you're a star seed, our light naturally shines so bright and it triggers so many people. But when we're kids, we don't really understand what's going on. We're developing. So we're muted for it. We're, we're pushed down. We're suppressed. We're villainized for it. We're, we're uh, scapegoated for it. We're bullied for it because we can't shine our light. Since we don't do that or we're bullied so many times, sometimes we eventually shut down and we never realize a lot of our true gifts and some people never wake up from that. Uh, but you definitely didn't get to develop your own identity. You weren't encouraged and fostered. You weren't nurtured in love that were like into this beauty. Like no one was really there to support you, to help you become who 
you're meant to be, which is way more powerful than probably anyone you know or in your family or your friends. And that's why they didn't want to help you. Because, um, you know, again, your light naturally shines so bright. It just, it was threatening to them, right? It was triggering to them. So, uh, yeah, if you're one of the rare blessed people to have had parents that don't just, didn't just tell you what to do, but asked you questions and helped you form your own autonomy and identity, man, you are blessed. It's very few though. Um, so again, at what point do we switch from looking outside ourselves for the answers to looking within? Most never do. Self-reflection is the key to self-mastery. The only way you can master yourself and create the life that you want is by self-reflecting. Self-reflecting is when we do just that. We held up, hold up a mirror to ourselves and we reflect on what we see. And it's difficult. Most people never do this because they don't want to see the truth. They don't want to admit because their ego is keeping them safe in the same place. So they won't admit what they need to admit so they can have power of it and move on. Self-reflection is the key to self-mastery. The reason why is because when you become, when you self-reflect and you become self-aware, once you become aware of something, now you have the power to change it. Not only become aware of it, but own it. Then you have the power to change it. When you keep denying that this is something, oh, it's not a big deal, I don't have that issue, I don't have that issue, I don't have that issue, that's your ego talking. Well, if you don't have that issue, but everyone else sees it, but you're not willing to admit it, well, you'll never change it. And if you never change it, you'll never get a different result. So you have to be brutally honest and it starts with self-reflection. Ask yourself the hard questions. When I did this emotional intelligence course in LA, it's funny, the, the level one course, they have this little sign up and it gets bigger every day. You don't realize it until someone points it out to you. And above the speaker, the trainer facilitator of this course, the little sign says, what are you pretending not to know? And day one, it's like this little sign, right? Like here's my head and it's this little sign. Day two, it's this big. Day three, day four, and then day five, it's like this big banner behind you. Because you're open, you're aware, it helps you crack open. So the question you have to ask yourself, what am I pretending not to know? What am I not willing to admit to other people that I know is true? Most people will never go there. What are you afraid to, what are you afraid to admit to others or share with others out of guilt or shame? That's the big one. Whatever you're shameful about, whatever you're guilty about, whatever makes you feel uh, inadequate, that's where you gotta go. Bro, sis, that's where you gotta go. That's what shadow work is. That's your shadow. What are the shameful things that you do now or the things you're not proud of that you just wouldn't even tell or share to others? That's where you gotta go. Not comfortable, not fun. You see me and it's all like positivity and you know and love and peace because and you say that it's genuine or at least I get that feedback is because it is but it's only because it only is because I've gone there so much and continue to go there when I tell people that I've been suicidally depressed in my life many many times to the point where I was less than eight hours away from hanging myself yeah serious I don't mean to get all morbid and crazy People still get me that. I'm like, there's no way. Oh my gosh, there's no way. You're so positive. You're so loving and genuine. Yeah, it's because I've looked the devil in the eyes. I've looked my soul, the darkest parts of me, right in the eyes and I won. And so I've overcome a lot of that. And not only have I overcome that, I understand that I'm still overcoming that and that the journey never ends. And so that's why I spend my time constantly reflecting, studying, improving. How can I become a better man? How can I become a better person? What are the parts of myself that I'm still ashamed of that I need to work on? Starts with brutal honesty. This is an uncomfortable video, man, for a lot of people. A lot of people are probably already clicked off about a lot of crap, but that's okay because the ones that stick through, you that are watching this, I promise you, when you overcome this stuff and you really decide to look, take a deep look under the hood, the power that you will gain on the other side is invaluable. You have no idea the doors that will unlock and open for you. It's incredibly powerful. What are you afraid to admit to or share with others? What is some stuff that you wouldn't share? Because honestly, I don't feel like I wouldn't share anything anymore. I don't really care. Because I'm comfortable with who I am because I've gotten in touch with that parts of myself. What happens when you are unafraid to share your darkest secrets and shame with others? What happens when you now have nothing to hide? When you can talk about all this crazy stuff from the past, all this stuff that you used to be so shameful about, you used to never tell anyone about your porn addiction or the fact that you uh, steal money from 
you know, your work or things like that, that type of stuff. Or the fact that you like, you know, cheated on, or you like cheated on your husband or the fact that you, you know, slept with your girlfriend's best friend or whatever, that shameful, guilty stuff is the stuff that you're still carrying around that you're unafraid to admit. But what happens when you admit it and you can come clean with it, your soul, man, oh my gosh, you release so much heavy weight and burden that you're carrying around because you're using so much energy energy to suppress that stuff and hide it from others. You may not have to admit it to other people and come clean, but you at least have to come clean with yourself and look at this stuff so you can be at peace with all the things that you weren't at peace with before. That's how you become truly unstoppable and empowered, and that's what happens. When you're willing to look under the hood at the dark parts of yourself and own it, now you're not affected by the opinions of other people. Now you're not a people pleaser. Now you don't say sorry every two seconds for not doing anything wrong. Oh, 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 am I in your way? Sorry. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry. Are you one of those people? You're not a sorry person, but you think you're always doing something wrong because you haven't gotten real with yourself. There's a lot of self-worth stuff going on there, bro, sis. Oh, sorry. I always tell people when they start doing that with me, I'm like, don't say sorry. You're not a sorry person. And they look at me and they're like, he sees me. Oh my God, I want to hide. And I tell him some stuff. But anyways, when you overcome those most guilty, darkest, shameful parts of yourself, you become empowered and unstoppable. Because what can anyone say that you haven't already admitted to yourself? Nothing. So why are you not really affected by like what other people say or think of you? And they also don't even really know you, dude. We'll do a whole video on that about um, people pleasing and learning to be unaffected by the opinions of other people. Quit worrying about what other people think. I know that's like the biggest thing. We'll, we'll do a video on that. What you have to understand is that when people say something to you or the parts of you that you're unwilling to admit or talk about, those shameful, dirty, dark secrets you got, and we all got them, when you overcome them, you become empowered and unstoppable. And then what you also realize, and here's how you know, when you're talking to someone in different interactions, when people, when situations, when relationships, whatever, trigger you and you get pissed off, that is the clear indicator and in telling you with bright lights, this is what you need to look at and address. So for instance, um, what's an example? You go out to eat with your group of friends and like someone jokingly says, dude, you're cheap. And you get pissed off like a mother about it. You go, dude, what? You know, I'm not, I'm not cheap, man. And you got this big old outburst. Bro, sis, that's because you are cheap. That's why you're triggered by it. And if you would only look at it and embrace it and say, okay, he's right. She's right. How can I improve the situation? That trigger will no longer bother you. Your whole behavior, your whole world will change. That's what's healing. Dude, you are so petty. You're just gossip. You always gossip and talk about people. Blah, 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 I never do that. Blah, 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 blah. She's right. All I do is talk about other people and gossip. And blah, 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 blah. Anything that anyone says to you that's triggering is the signpost that that's because it's true for you and you're just unwilling to admit it and your ego won't let you. Here's an example that uh, I always give people. Say, let's say hypothetically, man or woman, whatever, let's just say you're a, a football fan and your team is uh, um, the San Francisco 49ers and you bleed red and gold, man. You're like, oh, I'm a huge San Francisco 49er fan. Oh my God, I love the San Francisco 49ers. You know, I, I, oh, yeah, I love them. You can't say anything about them. They're amazing. They're the best, right? You're a San Francisco 49ers fan. So if someone says, man, I don't even follow football anymore that much. Okay, let's say like Baltimore Ravens quarterback, uh, Lamar Jackson. You're a 49ers fan and someone's, you see this thing and you're hanging out with some couple people and you go, dude, Lamar Jackson's terrible, man. He's way overrated. He's crappy. You're a 49ers fan. You're going to be like, I don't care, man. Whatever. Yeah, he is trash. He's, he's whatever. You don't care. It doesn't bother you at all because you don't care. You don't identify with Lamar Jackson. That ain't your guy. Brock Purdy's your guy. Now, if someone says, dude, Brock Purdy sucks. I don't care what anyone says. Super Bowl or not. He's like, 
He's such trash, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, what? You're an idiot. Bro, you're so stupid. Bro, bro, bro. And you get all worked up. Now, why did you get upset when someone said something about Brock Purdy, but she didn't get upset when they talked about Lamar Jackson? Why? Ask yourself that. The reason you didn't get upset when they said Lamar Jackson, but you did with Brock Purdy is because you identify with Brock Purdy. That's a part of you. You're identifying with that. So now, because you've identified it on an ego level, when somebody says wrong and they're attacking this guy who you've never met and probably never will, you are identified with it. So your ego has identified it. So an attack on him is now an attack on you. So you don't care about Lamar Jackson. So, okay. So follow me here. Now, when someone says something or does something that triggers you, or you see somebody that you don't like, ask what you don't like about them because whatever you don't like about them is exactly what's in you. And if it wasn't true, you, you wouldn't care and you wouldn't resonate with it. But the reason you get upset when someone says something to you and you get triggered is because that's a part of you you're unwilling to admit if it wasn't true, it would be Lamar Jackson. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't care. But whatever they say, it pisses you off because you do identify with it. You're just unwilling to admit it. But that is the path to your healing. That is the path to your empowerment when you admit that and you reflect on it and you embrace it. Because when you embrace it and you admit it, now it no longer has power over you. Now you've owned it and you have power over it but your ego won't let you do that. So you have to conscious, you rise above as your higher self consciously squash that. When you do that, you're unstoppable, man. Not only that, here's the cool part about it. When somebody says something or trigger that triggers you or a situation or something happens where you get upset or have an emotional reaction to it, dude, now you use that trigger and you seek it and say, what do I need to learn from this? Why am I so upset about this? And you start using those triggers as catalysts for growth and self-reflection. So instead of getting upset, you get excited and you go, damn, I got a lot to learn about this. Ooh, what do I need to let go of? What am I, what parts of me are unhealed that's getting pissed off about this? What's part of this is true for me? Ooh. That's when you become unstoppable because now stuff doesn't piss you off. Now you look at it with curiosity and you're like, dude, tell me more. Like, I seek it. I wait for feedback. And at this point, since I wait for it, I can easily tell when people are just like projecting and like being angry and upset. Or I can tell, because if it really resonates with me, I'm like, yeah, tell me, what do I need, what do I need to do? Here's an example. I was uh, having dinner months ago, whatever, with my buddy, Daniel. And um, we we're just like getting a burger at uh, Islands or something like that. Anyways, he's going through some stuff with his significant other and I just kind of went I didn't really coach him you know we were friends and he knows how I roll and I just kind of went in on him like I was like bro this is what's happening xyz blah 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 and he was agreeing with me he's like you're right dude no you're totally right I get it I understand I agree with you as well and then it got to the point where like I wouldn't I was going in a little too rough like a little too rigid I wasn't I wasn't giving with compassion um, it was just kind of like blunt force. But anyways, um, and he told me, he's like, dude, I agree with you, but man, your delivery is like, it's crappy, dude. It's rough. Like this is rough delivery. And at first at the very instant he said that I was, I could feel that trigger and be like, Oh, you're just not open. Blah. And then I thought about it and I was like, okay, listen to what he's saying. This is good feedback. My delivery. If I want to be the person who can really help other people in the way that I'm able to, I have to change my approach. What am I missing? I was missing compassion. So even though I had some great insight as to what was going on, since I wasn't approaching it with compassion and empathy, the message, it still hit because we're buddies, but to other people, it's not going to hit. So I have to approach things with compassion. And it was a reminder because I was talking to my sister about some stuff she was going in. I can't help sometimes go up into coach mode because I'm like, I just want you to see this. So I asked people questions. I wasn't uh, approaching it with as much compassion as I needed to. And the, the point she was hearing me, but it was part, I could tell it was partially blocked because since I didn't approach it the right way, uh, her ego was blocking part of it because I wasn't giving from a full authentic heart. So anyways, using my trick, the point is use your triggers as points of growth and self-reflection. Why does that piss me off? What part of that do I identify? You have to be brutally honest. If you're not open to this stuff and you're not willing to be brutally honest with yourself, you're not going to grow. 
And here's the thing, some of it might not resonate with all. And they, when people give you feedback or situations, it actually isn't true for you. Only you can decide that and discern for yourself. But if you have an emotional reaction to something when you're upset, nine times out of 10, it's because it's true. Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson, you identify with it, your ego does. There's a part of you there is trying to defend you, your ego, but you gotta overcome that. Uh, the stuff that you see good in others and bad is within you. So people say on the comments, you know, they're like, I'm sure you guys have read some of these stuff and they're like, oh man, you're awesome. And I'm like, thank you, I appreciate that and I receive it. And whatever you're seeing in me is the same with you. you whatever you see is what you like about me, it's within you. Whatever you don't like about me, it's within you. We're just reflections for each other. That's when it also gets powerful. You're using other people's reflections because we are just mirrors for each other. You know, that's why it's funny. The thing that pops up is, you know, you are your mother's uh, daughter. You are your father's son. You go, I'm nothing like my mother. Nothing like my father. I hate them. Ugh, they're terrible. It's because all that stuff is true. And you don't want to admit it. I'm nothing like them. Yeah, you might not be. But they're lighting up parts in you that you need to heal in order to get over that. You might be completely different. You might hate them and you become the complete opposite of who they were or have been because you hate them so much. Either way, it's still blocking you. It's crazy, man. This is how we heal, though. This is how we move on, become empowered, and build the lives that we want. Okay, I'm starting to run on a little bit here. So, the stuff that pisses you off is true. That's your shadow. Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson. So, what are some tools that we use? You've got to self-reflect. You've got to give yourself time and space to reflect doesn't have to be long you're at your kids waiting for him to get out of school in the parking lot just reflect don't think about what you got to do next you're just waiting you got 20 minutes to kill while you pick your kids up from school sit there in the car and be like man what am i pretending not to know like what do i need to admit and most people just avoid it they go i don't have time for this oh i don't have time for this that's your ego preventing you from growing i'm just gonna irk at you and it i was gonna continue to burn you it's going to grow it's going to get worse it's going to get more intense you have to focus on these things when you're awakened right this is a tool writing i've said this a million times i'll say it a million times again put pen to a paper get yourself a freaking journal blank ass pages a bunch of blank ass, blank ass pages sit down and write all your thoughts and feelings i was at work yesterday kelly's a bitch oh kelly's such a you know, she's so petty. She just gossips. Oh, she's toxic. And all that may be true. And none of that might be true for you. And you are the opposite of it. But again, just reflecting and writing on it. Well, what do I need to do to better the situation? Well, this is a sign I've been fed up with this job for a while and she's just going overboard. I just don't want to be here anymore. See what I'm saying? So just reflect. So it might not mean that whatever you see is resonating with you, but you have to reflect on what the situation, what the environment, what the people are, are guiding you to, the universe. Like I said yesterday, me and my car, it was like, I was ready to do a bunch of stuff, get some things done, continue the go, go, go. And the universe was like, dude, pump the brakes, literally chill out. You're going to sit around today and do nothing and hang out with Manny. Okay. Oh, we got a low battery thing. So hopefully that didn't interrupt the video, but we'll wrap it up. Sign for the universe. Dragon on, bro. Um, meditate. When you meditate and you sit in silence, it's not about controlling your thoughts, but you can observe your thoughts. You can start to discern what thoughts are programmed or are not programmed. Ask yourself questions with brutal honesty. Um, what am I pretending not to know? Why am I upset about this? Why am I triggered by this? What is this situation telling me? Where do I need to grow? How can I handle this differently? What could I have done differently? Man, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Why did I say that? Where does that come from? Why do I still do that? How can I change it? Self-reflection, brutal honesty. Quotes for today. First one is from Aristotle, Greek philosopher. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. All the answers that you seek are within you. You just have to give yourself time and space to reflect. Self-reflection, self-study, self-awareness. It's the key. The great, uh, yes, the greatest of faults is to be conscious of none. Socrates. The greatest of faults is to be aware of none. I'm sure you're perfect. You don't have any faults. You're, what is it? Outcast. 
your roses really smell like ooh ooh ooh, <laughs> right? You don't you don't you don't use the restroom. You don't puke. You don't fart. You don't do anything human. You got no faults. You're perfect. We all are, right? It's crazy, right? The greatest of faults is to be conscious of none. And the last one's from Rumi. Beautiful. Oh, happy the soul that saw its own faults. When you stop letting the triggers control you and you start using them as guideposts as to what you need to work on within yourself and it becomes a practice, oh my gosh, how empowered you become how healed you become, how curious you become, how the world changes for you. Oracle card of the day. Tap three times, clear the energy of the last reading. Woo, always with the neck crack. We ask to receive the purest and most divine truth, my highest good, your highest good, and the highest good of all. That's the one. Dude, pulled this one recently. Coming up again, this is the one that fell out of the deck. A lot of cards in here. The chariot, number seven. Numero seven, the chariot. You're on your way. Reflection, self-study, self-awareness. Learn about yourself. Ask yourself the questions, develop your identity. You'll have the answers within you. will start to pop up, the chariot. Look at the picture first, see what resonated with you. Message, determination and self-control. Career advancement, acknowledgement of success by others. To me, it means get on your horse. Determination and self-control reflect and learn improve yourself when you improve yourself at your core by admitting the things you don't want to admit that are true you can become empowered by them when you become empowered by them and you admit them now they have no power now they have no power over you and you can use that energy that you were using to hide that guilt and shame in order to create something new and beautiful determined career advancement get on your horse time to get going guys do the work the chariot is an indicator of great determination and willpower. You may feel uncertainty regarding your situation, but need have, but you need have no fear. When this card is present, it's your card confirmation from Archangel Metatron that you have what it takes. Step out of your comfort zone and charge bravely ahead with joy and confidence. A great leap forward is coming your way. It will take balance, self-control, and hard work, but you're ready for the task at hand. Public recognition for your success is sure to come. Is sure to come. Allow yourself to feel pride in what you accomplish. Additional meanings of the card. Career advancement, diligence, calm control over equally important but conflicting goals. Kind of kind of ran on today again. I'm, I'm going to try to tighten these things up, but I don't know. When I get going, I'm like, it, it's like it's me speaking, but it's not. So I feel like I just kind of got to let, let the message ride. It was my headphone case. So that's what I have for you guys today. Self-awareness, self-reflection, self-study look within you have all the answers within you sit on it it may not come overnight it may not come in a week it may take a couple months sit on it and it'll come when you least expect it ask your sub subconscious to give you the answer before you go to bed ask yourself the question set the intention to clear your mind say tonight before i go to sleep i'm clear of every any and all blocks preventing me from receiving the divine answer that i know that i possess my question is, what's the best way to go about X? How do I do X? And then go to sleep, watch dreams and things that may start to come in. Love you guys. I will see you again very soon. Peace and love.